First day of a new job. Kind of like a first date with your new career. Will it be love at first sight? Or will it be, thanks for dinner. Maybe I'll call you sometime. I'll be a lady if you be a gentleman. I'm floating away from a pillow and into the woods. I'm finding my way to your heart by the light of the moon. The forest can tell I'm under your spell. You're taking me out of my shell. I'll be the penny if you be the Stakes are high. So no shortcuts are allowed. Nothing less than perfection will do. Because today could be the most important day of your life. It could be the day when it all falls into place. Or when it all falls to pieces. dressed up for school. Uh, so, uh, big day, huh? First day at work? Mm-hmm. I'm really excited. You know, despite the unintended skylight, I have a good feeling about today. Unintended skylight? Don't ask. I, I have a good feeling because I feel like I'm turning a page in my life, which is weird because my new job is in publishing. And oh my god, I forgot to tell you that my new boss, Ambrose, he asked to read my short stories, which is like, <laughs> like it never happened. So, oh my god, am I still talking? Not anymore. I talk a lot when I'm nervous. Yeah, I know this about you. Of course. I'm not just nervous because it's my first day of work. I'm nervous because of the thing. The thing? The thing that we did with our mouths. It was nice, I, th I thought. Me too. So what do we do? Um, I guess we talk, like grown-ups. Over dinner. I'll cook. Uh, you don't cook, you heat. <laughs> I know this about you. Well. Listen, uh, knock him dead today. Thank you. Okay. Good. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. Oh, taxi! Hi! Taxi! That's it! No, 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 wait, wait, wait! Thanks, buddy. Wait! the footwear. Oh, I know. It's my first day of work. My new heels snap. Mm -hmm. So do I wait for a shoe store to open and show up an hour later, or do I hit the local pharmacy and pull out the old debit card and, and hope that your boss thinks it's enterprising and not desperate? Yeah. I'm Julianne. This is Brent. Hey, nice to meet you. Um, I should probably go report to Ambrose. About that, Ambrose has moved on to other opportunities. Oh, I'm surprised. So is Ambrose. Mm -hmm. He got replaced by the woman who edited The Secret of Now. The Secret of Now. Isn't that just a knockoff of The Secret? <laughs> a knockoff of The Secret. It's actually one of the best-selling self-help titles of the year. Of course. Um, I should probably go find my new boss. She's right here, Erica. Oh, I'm... I'm, um, I'm, just, I'm just really sorry. I thought that you were... You um, thought, here's this young babe. She just has to be somebody's assistant. She couldn't possibly be the new editorial director of nonfiction. But I am. And I didn't get here because I look good in a skirt. I earned it. You want on my team? You better do the same. And the flip-flops, desperate. For 16 months, three weeks, two days. Not that I was counting. When they promoted Julianne to editorial director, she made me junior editor. She bought for me hard. Congratulations. Thanks, but I know her agenda. Julianne's mantra is keep your enemies close and 
those that can get your job even closer. Yes, you at the department meeting this afternoon, Frank. And I am sure that you'll have a terrific slate of projects to show us. We're gonna do great things, Frank. Was that Frank Galvin? Yes, the Frank Galvin, owner and editor-in-chief. Oh, I know him. I mean, I know of his reputation. River Rock has published some important pieces of literature. At well, important pieces of literature don't move units. Not anymore. You know what does? This. We sold half a million copies last year. You know why? This book helps people. Well, I'll be sure to read it. Mm. Well, this copy signed. You have to buy your own. Oh, right. <laughs> <clears throat> so... <clears throat> you have two degrees in English Lit. Mm -hmm. You've never been an editorial assistant before. You've never even worked in publishing before. You're how old? I'm 32. Oh, because I'm 27. I took my first proofreading job right out of high school. Look, I understand you have qualms. <laughs> because people who have two degrees in English Lit and use words like qualms are usually literature snobs and I have no time for them. I understand and honestly, I'm not some ivory tower English Lit snob. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I beg to differ. See, I read your short collection of even shorter stories. Mm. Ambrose left it for me. How nice of him. They're very heavy. I wrote them in university, and I haven't had time for rewrites. You've had over 10 years. <laughs> well, if you're done with them, I'd love to have them back. Oh, ah, 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 who said I was done? Who knows, maybe I'll even show these to Frank. <laughs> Brent? Can you show Erica to the coffee lounge? It's time to send her to school. Thank you. Brent, you've worked with Julianne for a long time. How did you do it with that, um... Going insane. Yeah. A lot of meditation, yoga every morning, plus I'm heavily medicated. Oh. Hmm, out of her favorite organic espresso beans. What? You can make her latte with regular beans, your choice. No, you point me to the nearest Starbucks. I need to go buy organic espresso beans, stat. Ah, score one for the newbie. You passed the test, good one. No need for Starbucks. I keep a spare bag of espresso beans for my emergency drawer. Oh, thank God. Julianne goes Hannibal if you make her latte with reg. She gets this sexy little lip curl. God, she could be so hot. Oh, okay. Uh, speak of the devil. Okay, she needs me. I'll be right back. Don't move. Good morning. What are you doing here? This is a private office. You can't just barge in here. Oh, I did not barge. I waltzed. That security guard, Phil. He is a sweet guy. You need to go. I am feeling anxious enough to begin with. This is now me. Oh, feelings of anxiousness. Could you not do that? Taking notes is a part of my job. OK, speak to me. Mm. How else are you feeling? Um, frustrated. I'm, I'm finally in a place that I want to be at. And my boss is a passive aggressive bitch face. Bitch face. Oh my god, I hate air quotes. Who even does that? You know that bumper sticker, question authority? I think a better one for you right now might be question your attitude towards authority. And what is that supposed to mean? Oh, you're a smart woman. You'll figure it out. Oh, by the way, I made myself a dopio espresso and I finished the beans. I hope that's okay. Will you please leave? Why don't you go say hi to your good buddy, Phil, huh? Tell him I said hi, too. Oh, hola. Okay, hi. Who's that? Uh, I think he's from accounting. With those cheekbones, me no think so. Teach me the ways of the latte, Sensei. Well said. Thank you so much for coming in today. Ambrose spoke so highly of you. Well, Ambrose and I, we go way back. I was very sad to hear about his departure, but I'm really hoping that you and I can move forward with my book, Julianne. Oh, so do I, Marcus. Mark, please. Mm. 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 Ooh. Okay. So, um, I read your outline, and I'm hate to be such a Debbie Downer, but it really dwells in the past. It's a memoir. Mm hmm Have you heard of a little bestseller called The Secret of Now? Well, you have a framed cover behind you. Oh, right, there it is. Um, the author, Thomas Friedkin, friend of mine, he says, strive not to look behind, but always to the present moment. Look to the now. 
I wonder if you can bring any of that wisdom to your memoir. I'm not really sure I follow you. Perhaps, if I may, what Juliana is saying is that we're looking for projects with a self-help angle. We need something for the millennials. We need something that we can market on social networking sites like Facebook or MySpace. Are you, are you familiar with those? I've dropped in a few times. Well, it was awesome to meet you, Marcus. Mark, please. So we're going to kick your outline around, jam on it, see what we can come up with. Sound good? Well, thank you for meeting with me. OK, Stahl's outline. Read it, type up some notes. We better look like we tried to come up with something. Sure, sure. And I'm sending you back to latte school. This was repulsive. Is it me? Oh, this memoir is slow going. Except for this one chapter that's riveting. Well, you can't charge people $29.95 hardcover for one chapter. Yeah, unless you made more of it, like... Whatever, I'm supposed to write notes, not reinvent the wheel. Well, Erica, if there's one thing you do know, it's books, okay? Don't hold back all your good ideas. Unleash them. Trust me, I've been doing enough unleashing lately. I kissed Ethan. I mean, I... I really kissed him. That is not the kind of bomb you drop in the middle of a conversation. I know, I'm sorry. So, after all these years, you you made out? Mm -hmm. Was it good? Very, but I mean, many. Thank you. That's not what it's about. Yeah, it is. <laughs> no, it isn't. I mean, dating Ethan, it would be weird and complicated. I mean, he just separated from his wife. Just answer this one question. Is Ethan the kind of guy that you could see yourself with? Yes. No, I, maybe. I don't know, I don't know. That's something you need to figure out. The kiss? Scale of one to 10. 10. Thousand. <laughs> the board wants me to deliver a bigger, better secret of now. This is not it. I think we have to kill it. We already gave Starl a healthy advance. Uh, Ambrose did, not me. Well, I'm open to suggestions. I mean, if someone has a great idea on how to salvage this project, I'm all ears. OK. Communication? ET phone home. I uh, don't see how that applies. <laughs> Just Stahl invented the Banting 7204 satellite, which launched a revolution in digital communications. Jan, uh, where's the juice? Um, he was a crack addict. Wife, kids, a titan of business, but there he was, and night after night, smoking crack with gang members. Dark. I don't like it. Oh, but he beat the addiction, won his family back, returned to the top of the business world, and I really feel like, like there's a lot of juice in that. But I'm, I'm just the assistant, so... <sighs> Whoa. I don't know why they're paying me all the money. She's the one with all the fab ideas. I'm sorry, did I, did I do something wrong? You just made me look like an idiot in front of my whole team. I was trying to help. And I was trying to bury a book that I don't want. I, I'm, I, 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 Stuttering I, I, idiot, apparently. If you don't get it together today, it's gonna be your first and your last day. FYI, when I say make some notes, that means bury it. Temp. Erica, why'd you take a break and join us? Um, come, 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 come. You know, have a seat. So, like I said, anyone up for a little reading? Ah, good. 
I have a stunning work of staggering genius straight from the slush pile. This is a ritual we used to do at the other office. Julianne reads from the worst submissions. It's hilarious. Okay. And a little cruel. Relax, the author remains anonymous. The house is an abattoir. <laughs> Smoke billows from the chimney and up, breaking apart the night sky. The trees sway in the wind like the scratches from a broken pen. Oh, God, stop. We're all gonna go to hell. Just getting started. There's five short stories in all one for every day this week. <clears throat> the December yard is gray. The Morgan family sits inside. Mother's tears flow. Julianne, we need to talk. Uh, I need to prepare for a presentation. You need to be somewhere else. And you're still here. I just need 60 seconds of your time. You got 15. What? 13. Well, um... Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Maybe we, uh... Use your I mean, words. We can talk. Um, we can... Mm, 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 just, just, Thanks for coming in. Mm, mm. You don't miss your water till your well runs dry. William Bell. Not thirsty, not really. When I get nervous my mouth, it just it just dries up like the Gobi Desert. Mm, cotton mouth, the pasties. Also known as dough mouth. In medical terms, we refer to it as zero stomia, the rapid depletion of moisture from the mouth. It's triggered by anxiety. <laughs> Common side effect of marijuana inhalation. There's an idea. Maybe I should get high for work. That might help. I doubt it. I think Julianne would seriously harsh your mellow. Sit. I should get back to work. I insist. I don't think I need to root around in my past to figure out why a psychotic boss makes me tongue-tied. Would you say that you are someone who is comfortable with confrontation? Who is? Now, your new boss. A controlling, passive-aggressive, downright cruel. I mean, she is so good at getting under your skin, you actually lose the power of speech. Does that sound like anyone you know? My mother? Lozar. Tell me about him. Antonin Lozar. Whoa! Intense lecturer, Whoa! esteemed professor, and the dread of every first-year creative writing student. Anybody you paying attention? I mean, for Ethan, it was a bird course, but for me, it was life and death. I mean, I love poetry. I was determined to impress him, and I thought I wrote the poem that was gonna win his respect, Snowflakes. It was about the uniqueness of every soul. Have I been made into this snowflake? Lozo never cared for anything that I wrote, but snowflake for snowflakes, he dug down to a special place in his heart where true evil lurked. <laughs> they, they slipped through. What? Soon, I, I felt suffocated. I mean, I did what anyone would do, right? He ran. God! You will never be a writer. I never came back. I failed the course. Come to think of it, I haven't written anything creative since. Hmm. If I could do it over, I would look Lozar in the eyes and recite snowflakes. Every single word. I'll see you on the other side. No, no, wait, I need prep time. I haven't read the poem in like 15 years. We are postponing Life Speeds By, Seneca 5 BC. No, seriously. Stop with the cold, please. No, 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 okay, just hit pause. Keith, uh, you were going to read to us. Sorry, I think I um, had an allergic reaction. I might want to think about getting some pollen filters in the Benton. Erica, 
Yes, Professor. Shut up. Okay. Okay, Ethan, before we were so rudely disturbed, you were going to read to us from your new work. Okay, sure. Uh, Come on, begin, please. Yep. This is a poem I wrote called, Your Love is a Drive-By. Your love is a drive-by. Your bullets go ping off the body armor of my heart. Ping, 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 ping. Ping, 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 ping. Ping, ping, ping. All right. Ping, 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 ping. I said ping. that's enough. <sighs> Ethan, Ethan, Ethan. Again, you take us down with you to the very sub-basement of self-expression. And for that, I thank you. Um, you're, you're welcome. And you're shit. Your poetry is shit. Even your pen, shit. Just sit down. Erica Strange, you're next. Um, Professor, I just have a little problem. So do I. <laughs> I have to endure another one of your poems. An air quote, too. We are waiting, Erica. <clears throat> I call this piece Snowflakes. Poetry is organic. It lives when you speak it, not when you read it. Here are your snowflakes, Erica. Itty bitty tiny snowflakes. Still we wait. Um, I... I'm... Oh. I am crouched on the axis of the sun, on the edge of my cloud. Oh, give me something with passion. Wombs, pregnant with thought. Oh, God, I wish to die. Has this, um, am I, have, have I been made into this snowflake or? Slush! Sentimental! Juvenile! Slush! You hate me right now, huh? You feel like you're being attacked. Show me what you feel. Come on, express your pain. Express from within. My low voice is killing me. Louder. I must confess. I still believe. Believe in what? Tell me. When I'm not with you, I lose my mind. Give me a sign. Hit me, baby, one more time. Yes! Speak the voice of the victim. The reason I breathe is you. You've got me blinded. There's nothing I wouldn't do. It's not the way I planned it. I must confess my loneliness is killing me. Don't you know? When I'm not with you, I lose my mind. Give me a sign. Hit me, baby, one more time. just from the top of your head. Yeah, it's straight from the top of my head. Who'd even think of writing an old to one's oppressor? I'm <laughs> genius, I know. Come here, my little poetess. Hey, I think you should call your piece Voice of Flame. I was thinking of calling it uh, Hit Me Baby One More Time. No, Voice of Flame, much better. Okay. Hey, everybody, you must come to the Poetry Slam Erica will be reciting her new work. Oh, no, 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 no. He's joking, Professor. That was an, that's a one-time only performance, really. Nonsense. You must share this with an audience. Hey, I will insist on it. Look, I'm just going to come right out and ask it. 
You just recited this weird poem about this abusive guy. Do I have to kick somebody's ass? No, 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 no. I made that up. I am fine. <laughs> I just made it up. <laughs> Ethan. Claire. Hey. hey. Hmm. Thanks for coming. Hmm. So, drinking in the afternoon. That's so in Toronto of you. It's a celebration. Erica has been reborn as the poetess of fire. <laughs> I'm so sad that he snapped your lucky pen. Yeah, I guess he didn't like my sound effects. Well, I did. I thought they were evocative. So did I. Yeah, but ping ping. Should I have <sighs> cigarettes? Ethan, baby, do you think? Yep, I'm on it. So, so, Erica. Yeah, you're looking good. Thank you. So I hope you don't mind me asking like this, but. I mean, do you have anyone special in your life? You mean a boyfriend? Yeah. It's April 95, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, no one, just single. Oh. It's a plazo, huh? Mm -hmm. Cute girl like you. Mm hmm Actually, Claire, there is one guy, old, old friend, but recently. You felt the spark. But you're still unsure. It's complicated. Oh. See, when I saw Ethan, I just knew. I mean, no hesitation, no second guessing. And you see, now he's mine. Mm. And uh, as for your situation, well, some things are just not meant to be. I guess you're right. You'll find your Ethan one day. One day. Walking. Um, I got a jet, but thank you for the chat, Claire. Dr. Tom! Hey, Dr. Tom, wait, wait, wait. So, you're a dog walker this time? <laughs> Love the fanny pack. Yes, it's convenient for carrying treats. Isn't that right? Beautiful. Hey, what are your thoughts? You know what I love about dogs? They never pretend to be anything that they're not. You know? I mean, look at them. You get what you pay for with a dog. No artifice. Oh, so you're upset that I improvised. Do you think that it's appropriate to address one of your life regrets through plagiarism? Look, I'm not proud of this, but I know my Britney Spears, and Hit Me Baby One More Time isn't coming up for years. Are you kidding me? You came back here to do something specific, right? I know, I know. I, I wanted to face off Lozar and read Snowflakes, but he tore up the page that it was written on, and I can't, I can't remember it. Defeatism is the wretchedest of policies. George Bernard Shaw. No, I'm not being defeatist. I don't have a copy. But why does it matter so much that, you know, that I read Snowflakes? Hmm? Are you ever gonna answer a direct question when I ask it? Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Oops, I did it again. Britney Spears. Friends to see Chumbawamba at the Phoenix. Wow, you're hot. Dipped in the exertion of the. You're just, just fighting. <laughs> okay, I better hit the shower. Whoa, Ethan, what are you, what are you doing? What I always do. Okay, well, would you put some clothes on? Okay, Mom. Hey, beer me. Of course, you can ask me anything. Well, what's up with you today? 
I mean, you seem different, like you're carrying around this big secret. I am. See, I'm from the future. Erica, what are you talking about? What's going on with you? You want to know what's going on with me? I will tell you, I'm stuck in a manner of speaking, and I have to remember something that I wrote, and I have no idea why I have to remember it, but apparently it's important. Okay, well, what are you trying to remember? Snowflakes. That poem I was supposed to read for Lozar? I, I totally forgot the last few lines. I hate these generous handfuls of snowflakes, like pennies. They slip through my clenched hands and are never enough. How on earth did you remember that? Oh my God! You read me the finished poem for me just like two nights ago. I've read you tons of poems. Why did you remember that one? Because this one, this one was special. It's goofy. No, it's not. Look, I'm no expert. The kind of poetry I like is usually about gangsters. But this one you wrote, it was just you. Well, no wonder Lozar hated it so much. Screw him. This is who you are. You don't need his approval. If only life were that simple. It is. It is. Isn't it? Claire has no idea how lucky she is. I should probably shower. Every little thing I do trickles down and lands on you. Thank you. Claire's gonna be sad she missed this. I told her there'd be lots of chances to see Chumbawamba. Yeah, it's not like they're a one-hit wonder or anything. What's up, everybody? Are we all ready to hear some poetry? All right, right on. First up, someone new for y'all. She's a student here, studying with our esteemable Professor Lozar, who asked me, make that insisted that I put her on tonight. She will be performing a piece called Voice of Flame. Oh. 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 Go think all semester long you were this boring little schoolgirl, right, in this pretentious vomit. <laughs> now, you go up there and you show them the real Erica Strange. Thank you. That's exactly what I plan on doing. Okay, put your hands together for Erica Strange. Hi, everyone. A uh, slight change in plans. This is called Snowflakes. I am crouched on the axis of the sun, seated on the edge of my cloud, womb pregnant with thought. Have I been made into the snowflake, or has it been made into me? I hate these generous handfuls of snowflakes. Like pennies, they slip through my clenched hands and are never enough. Thank you. All right. Thank you. friends to hear voice of flame not this verbal diarrhea why would you choose to do this unoriginal melancholy bullshit because yes what what spit it out because that's all i've got okay snowflakes are my words it is my poem and i can say whatever i want i don't have to impress you or anyone here calm down erica my friends here they want to hear voice of flame well, they will hear it soon enough. In about four years. It's gone. in the business of delivering uplifting messages. I leave that to my dear friend, Thomas Friedkin. But I do see great things ahead for us here at River Rock Publishing. And one of the projects I am the most stoked about is a memoir from mogul Marcus Stahl. 
Now, I have to admit, when this proposal first came across my desk, I had my doubts. It seemed, you know, blah. But then, it suddenly came to me. Communications. Stahl revolutionized the industry. Now, I know what you're thinking. Julianne, where's the juice? Wait for it. He was smoking crack at the time, but, but he overcame the addiction, and oh, it's really just an amazing, amazing story. And so what we have here is a uniquely uplifting self-help slash tell-all. And I think there's a lot of juice in that. And I'll tell you what I think. I think you've done it again. Becoming a habit of yours, a really annoying one. I don't like the way you treat me. Oh, do tell. It's one thing to talk to me like an idiot, it's another to mock a short story that I wrote years ago, but stealing my ideas? I won't accept it. Oh, well, then I will accept your resignation. Pardon? Do I really need to translate? You're fired. Just tell me what happened. What got into you? Long story. Well, the bad news is that I'm gonna miss you. Hmm. Good news is that now I'm free to ask you out for a drink. A drink? Hmm. A drink, drink, a date? Yeah. Oh, do you have a boyfriend? Um, I, I hope so. I mean, we're friends and transition to... A drink? You and me? It's just, it's funny, because I thought that you were... Any relationship? No, honey. I like to play the field. Call me. I just want to say congratulations again on this exciting oh, new direction. Thank you so much, Frank. So would, would you say that the theme is one of redemption, or would you say it's more like triumph over adversity? What? Well, you know, I think either one of those is fine. Either one? <laughs> what kind of framing device were you thinking about? Life stories need organizing, first and foremost. Erica? Mm-hmm. You were in on that meeting. You, you took notes. Now's your chance to speak up. Please. Oh, well, the floor is yours. Julianne feels that the memoir should start on one particular night in 91. Now Stahl owed money all over town and was bottoming out in cocaine. Now that's one way to grab the reader. Go on. You want to see me? Close the door. <clears throat> well, you did it. You earned your place. What makes you so sure I still want it? I bailed you out because I care about the book, not because I care about you. Whatever. I'll see you tomorrow. Well, I never said I was coming back. You stole my ideas, Julianne. Oh, you really don't know how this works, do you? Okay. Let me break it down for you. Your ideas are a ball. You pass me the ball. I drive it to the net. We score. We win. We share in the glory. That's a neat rationalization. It's a game, Erica. Business is a game. Publishing is a game. You can either stand on the sidelines or you can play. It's really your call. Fine, one condition. I'm not gonna be nice to you. Just give me back my short stories. See you tomorrow.
That's it. So, big plans tonight? Not really. I'm just gonna hang with Ethan. You have that look of nervous excitement. As if perhaps tonight is more than just a hang. Mm -hmm. I, well, I've been thinking, and I think... I think I should take a leap. Who knows? It could be great. It could be a total disaster, but it... It could be amazing. What? Nothing. It's quite a thing to behold, this new confident Erica reciting the poem in her heart, standing up to her boss, taking a leap into love. I am pretty amazing, aren't I? Alice M. Swain said, courage is not the towering oak that sees storms come and go. It is the fragile blossom that opens in the snow. Thanks, Dr. Tom. Good night. Seems most of the time we walk around with the world on mute. But when you're on the cusp of something dramatic and maybe life-changing, it's like a filter comes off and suddenly everything comes alive. And even the smallest moment is imbued with the magic of possibility. And you think, this is the night when you drop your mask and reveal your true self. This is the night when everything is rewritten. Ethan? You left the door open. Hey, I'll, uh, I'll be right out. Okay. Oh. Hey. <sighs> Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Hi. Uh... Bought us a nice bottle of wine. Oh. Oh, wow. Uh, spared no expense, huh? We're celebrating? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm feeling great and um, I'm ready to have our, our talk. Are you okay? What's wrong? Yeah. Uh, what is this? Uh, Oh my God, you got served. I, I knew it was coming. I, I want to get divorced. I do. Claire and I are, are over. I, I know that. But when I look at the papers, it just... Uh, it just seems so final. I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything. It's cool. Just another thing to celebrate, right? Ethan. Fine, really. Never been better, actually. <clears throat> Wish I could find a corkscrew in this goddamn dump of an apartment. Hey, it's okay. I'm here. I'm glad. I really need a friend right now. I know, and you got one. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> 